The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Welcome, welcome to our new summer series entitled Psalms of Summer. A few facts about the Psalms in general. The Psalms found in the Old Testament of the Bible are a collection of poetic songs attributed to various authors. And most of them are believed to be composed by King David, whom we all know. They were compiled over many centuries and were used as an ancient way for Israel to worship. The Psalms cover a wide, wide range of themes, including praise and thanksgiving and laments, confession and wisdom. They offer a rich tapestry of spiritual benefits for both Christians and Jews. First, they are an expression of human emotions. Second, they serve as a guide for prayer and worship. And third, we know from Sunday Mass and the Psalm response we just sung that there are a real connection for us with God himself. The subtitle of this weekend is Gathering or Gaining, I should say, Enthusiasm. Gaining Enthusiasm. As schools close and vacations begin, many of us are already pretty enthusiastic. Yet even summer can lead us at times to the summer blues, especially when our expectations supersede the reality of our environment. Whether the blues are there or not, more enthusiasm can be gained from God's presence in our lives. And the Psalms can help us to do just that. There are 150 of them, too many to consider in this six-week message series, so we've selected different categories of Psalms with a representative Psalm for each category. We want to make the Psalm representing the category each week your Psalm especially when you'd like to increase your enthusiasm for your relationship with God. Yeah, we'll relate each psalm category to specific applications in your life and demonstrate how praying it could make a difference for you. Let, that's the promise. Let's move to delivering on that promise right now. In this first week, we'll be looking at Psalm 119 that speaks of one's love for God's law. It will answer the question, how can love for God's law relate to my level of enthusiasm? How can love for God's law help me gain even more enthusiasm than I already have? There's something in it for all of us. Love of the law is what has bound the Jewish people through thick and thin over thousands of years. The law is filled with epic stories from the beginning of the creation of the world to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to their myriad of descendants. And after thousands of years, Jewish people today continue to re remain integrally connected to their ancestors through the Psalms. And these same 150 Psalms connect us as well to them, the chosen people, and to our own Christian ancestors. The 176 verses of this week's psalm, yeah, 176 verses of this psalm are on the love of God's law. So important are they that I'd like to take each verse, 176 of them, and discuss each one with you starting right now. You got a couple days? Well, actually, joking aside, the 176 psalms are divided into 22 stanzas, one stanza for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Within the 22 stanzas, each stanza has eight verses that begins with the same letter of the alphabet of the stanza. So, deliver on my pro so to deliver on my promise, we'll relate each weekday psalm to specific applications in your life and demonstrate how praying it could make a difference in your level of enthusiasm. And when the summer blues do appear, the psalm verse can change the blues you may have into a heart full of sunshine. Enthusiasm, that's an interesting word. 
It's actually derived from two, derived from two other words, en and theos. En meaning in, theos meaning God. So those are the Greek words. The word conveys then the idea of a person being so inspired, so overtaken with the presence of God that they can barely contain the excitement. They have become entheos. They have, they're existing in God, physically, emotionally, spiritually. This is all to say that the truth of God applied to my circumstances in life can bring about a burst of enthusiasm that nothing else can provide. Psalm 119 is full of entheos, God in kinds of statements. Over and over, it affirms the value of having God's word in our lives. It keeps pounding away on that theme with a heavy, powerful beat to the music. Let's get a grasp of the whole psalm before we concentrate our attention on some select verses. As the longest psalm, it's also the longest chapter in the entire Bible. It has a unique feature that can only be appreciated in Hebrew. As I mentioned, the original structure of the song has it divided into 22 sections. And each section has eight verses. So the first section is entitled Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The second, Beth, the second, the third, Gimel, and the rest of the alphabet. They're not words at all. They're just letters of the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet. So within each section, each of the eight verses within have the same letter as the letter at the top of the verse. So this poetical structure is called acrostic, A-C-R-O-S-T-I-C, -C, acrostic. And it made the psalm easier for Jewish people to memorize because you know how each section is named and you know how each verse will begin. Pretty cool. Well, the purpose of this psalm is to give praise to God for his word. Its purpose is also to show how that precise praise animates our lives and fills them with enthusiasm. Think of Psalm 119 as similar to, in purpose to our childhood book entitled The Golden Book of ABCs, using the alphabet and deepening our enthusiasm for God. And now for the good stuff. Just how can Psalm 119 make a difference for you in these days of summer? I'd have to admit that trying to accomplish tasks with a lack of enthusiasm is like trying to walk with a set of heavy weights strapped to my ankles. So with this analogy, I'd ask you, what issues, what difficulties are you dragging around today? To help identify what's robbing your enthusiasm right now, think of an activity that you would enjoy and something that's keeping you from enjoying it right now. So, for example, I would enjoy praying a few minutes every morning if only I wasn't so unmotivated. Or I would enjoy starting a new project. Mm if only I had the support of my boss. Take a few moments of silence right now to fill in the blanks for yourself. I would enjoy, if only, this psalm about the word of God holds the key to regaining the enthusiasm for what you have just thought of enjoying. It can help you identify the issue that drags you down so you can address it with wisdom from above. Let me be clear. A lack of enthusiasm isn't a problem with emotions. It's a spiritual problem that can't be corrected with a pep talk or even a happy experience. You will find people driving miles and miles to attend a social event or standing in long lines to experience some high-level delight that will send them back home on a high of a great experience. But the temporary high wears thin real fast. 
And very quickly, we're back to the emotional low we started with. If Psalm 119 says anything, it says we must be willing to consume a steady diet of truth from a book written by God and digest the principles it contains. Pour over it, pray over it, read it, study it, memorize it, meditate on it, and let it saturate your very thinking. And most of all, use it when enthusiasm wanes and life becomes boring or monotonous or tedious. A verse or two of 119 will provide you with God's grace-filled word. It will have you hear a voice that is not your own. And in silent pauses, you will gain insights and strength and a renewed sense of purpose. Other attempts to gain spiritual growth will lead to frustration. We know. We've tried many of them, myself included. With each one, our enthusiasm has waned. With God's word, our enthusiasm can deepen and grow and flourish. Nothing, nothing enables us to live beyond the grind of low enthusiasm like a daily application of God's word to our situation. That said, let's look at three concrete benefits that Psalm 119 holds for us. The first one is verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate it. I meditate on it all day long. And the next verse, verse 98. Your commands are always with me. They make me wiser than my enemies. How's that for results? Verse 99. I have more insight than all my teachers, and I meditate on your statues, all your teachers, every one of them, more insight than them. And finally, verse 100. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. Notice the three results of embracing God's law, and I put them together in a summative fashion here. Wiser than my enemies, more insightful than all all my teachers, and more understanding than the elders. Hmm. In these verses, the psalmist speaks of the superiority of the word over three sources of truth that are held in high esteem by the world. Let's look at them more closely. The word makes me wiser than my enemies. You know, the world does place importance on knowledge gained from experience. But in this verse, the psalmist mentions experience specifically in dealing with our enemies. That's the insight. And the one who has a grasp of the word is wiser than they are. Sometimes difficult people will drag you down and drag your enthusiasm with it for sure. But fear not. Divine wisdom will help us rise above these negative impacts. All you need to know now is what or who in my life is dragging me down? And you have the antidote. Second, a second benefit of the word. Gives us more insight than all of our teachers. Wouldn't your grade school teachers love to hear this one? Or your high school teachers or your college teachers. More insight than all my teachers. Yeah, that's a promise. The world emphasizes the importance of getting knowledge from education. While additional education in a field of study or training in a particular skill never hurts, the Lord says that those who know the word possess more insight than their educators. After all, what good is an Ivy League education if you don't know how to live wisely? What help is a vocational certification if moral foolishness leads you astray? You can have more insight than all your teachers. Finally, the final benefit of the word, it causes us to have more understanding than our elders. Than our elders. Now, I hardly encourage respect for older people, especially I've become an elder. Uh, And yet I've noticed that 
age doesn't necessarily lead to understanding. To the contrary, I've observed many old fools and I have learned from many young sages. Verse 100 declares that the one who obeys God's word gains more understanding than many years without the benefit of scriptures. In summation, knowledge and application of the written truths of the word will better equip us for life than the combined advantages, combined advantages of hard knock experiences, dedicated teachers, or even decades, decades of living. I conclude with the word with which I began, enthusiasm. The promise of 119 is that when experiencing low levels of enthusiasm, or should the summer doldrums hit you bad, its verses hold a possibility for rekindling an enthusiasm that will come from within, an enthusiasm that will be sourced in God himself. So for hard work, I'm going to offer you a twofer. That's not Greek, by the way. Twofer, you know what it means. Somebody asked me at the last mass if that was Greek. No, it's not. Uh, all kinds of questions. So here are the resources, two of them. Uh, two of them. The first is the PDF. You can get it at churchnativity.com forward slash top three. And the other is the daily practice emails. Text pray to 88877. So we have a PDF file that I've created that has emotional states that we find ourselves in. And for every one of the emotional states, you've got a verse from Psalm 119 that's going to help you become more enthusiastic regarding that state, that emotion. Also, in our daily practice, I'll be offering an easy way to pray by taking a verse of the psalm into the silence and getting results. Using one or both of these resources can help you develop a habit of praying daily with the Psalms and linking verses to our own situations. Don't think of these resources as homework. After all, school is out. Think of them more as heart work, heart work that will deepen your enthusiasm promised. Let us pray. Gracious God, what a joy it is to celebrate your love in this summer that is before us. May the clouds and thunderstorms be few as we enjoy our families and friends in a more relaxed atmosphere with a more relaxed schedule. Deepen our joy in embracing your law, a law of love and compassion, a law of respect and acceptance. Bless our dads, granddads, stepdads, godfathers, as you send us forth this day through Christ our Lord. Amen.